In this video I would like to show you how you can replace your SOMFI awning or shutter remote control by using a MQTT app on your smartphone. For this you need a RF transmitter which you control with an ESP8266 like the Wemos T1 Mini. I will show you how to adjust the GitHub project SOMFI remote from Nictuino for your purposes. It is also necessary to replace the crystal of the RF transmitter so that the systems understand each other. Firmly soldered to a PCB, I will then give you tips on how to pack the finished project into an improvised or a self-printed case. Welcome to my YouTube channel. For this video I assume that you have installed the Arduino IDE. You also need a Linux based server. For this you can use a Raspberry Pi. You should have an MQTT broker like Mosquito installed on it. If you don't have an MQTT broker yet, I recommend the linked video of Andreas Spies, the guy with a Swiss accent, where he shows how to install the whole IoT stack on a Raspberry Pi with a few clicks. Besides the MQTT broker, you can easily install Node-RED, Grafana, InfluxDB and more and have the Swiss Army knife for a complex smart home control. You will also need an ESP8266 microcontroller such as the Wemos T1 Mini, which is currently available from China for less than 3 euros, including shipping. You also need an RF transmitter. These are usually offered for little money together with a receiver. Unfortunately, however, with a 433.92 MHz crystal, to allow our circuit to communicate with a SOMFI receiver, we need to replace the crystal with a 433.42 MHz type. As you can see, I have already desoldered the crystal of the RF transmitter here and replaced it with a 433.42 MHz one. Now connect the RF transmitter to the ESP8266. I use a small breadboard for testing purposes. As you can see, I connected the middle pin of the transmitter with the red cable to 5 volts. The right pin of the transmitter with the blue to ground. The yellow cable is used for data transfer. It connects the left pin of the transmitter with D1. And now we connect the microcontroller via USB to the PC and switch over to it. As already mentioned, I use the GitHub project SOMFI remote from Nictuino as a basis for the code. However, his code controls the ESP with HTTP commands. Since I prefer to do this via MQTT, you can find a fork of Nictuino's code under my account on GitHub. There you can have a look at my .ino file and download it under code download zip. You can find the links in the video description. Then open the Arduino IDE and there the file you just downloaded and unzipped. But before we can start, we have to make sure that the Arduino IDE is able to recognize our microcontroller and that the correct libraries are installed. Therefore, we click on File, Preferences and enter this link under Additional Board Managers which you can also find in the video description. After that you can search for ESP8266 under Tools, Board, Board Manager and install this module. Since I already did that, I only have a remove button here. Once this is done, click on Tools, Manage Libraries and search for Async Elegant OTA. With this library you can update your ESP8266 later via Wi-Fi and a web interface and don't have to pick it up again and connect it via USB to your computer. You also need the library PubSub Client to connect to the MQTT broker. So now let's have a look at the project. 
after including the libraries, some variables are defined. You have to edit them to match your Wi-Fi and MQTT credentials. Under the name Remote, a unique identification number of the remote control is defined. If you want to build more than one remote control, you have to change this number. Basically, these were all changes and we could upload the code now. But I nevertheless want to briefly explain the structure of the code so that you can also make changes to it yourself if necessary. First, there is a function build frame here. This is where the signal is sampled later, which is sent by radio to the receiver in the awning. By the way, Nictuino has also linked a website on its project page that explains the SOMFI RTS protocol in more detail. So this is the basis for the build frame function. The send command function is used to actually send the previously created frame. This is followed by the callback function, which monitors the MQDT topic, which by the way is garden slash awning, to see if we have sent a D for down with our smartphone, for example. The reconnect function re-establishes the connection to the MQTT broker if it has been lost. And now comes the actual setup. The microcontroller connects to our Wi-Fi, learns that something will happen at pin D1. Then it connects to our MQTT broker and starts async elegant OTA for later code updates over Wi-Fi. In the loop, we also have to enter the async elegant OTA again, as well as we have to enter the reconnect function mentioned before. In the callback function, we had stored the MQTT request under the variable demand, which we now continuously check in the loop, depending on whether, for example, an U for up or an D for down has arrived here now, the appropriate frame is produced and sent at the end by radio. When this is done, or in the idle state, the variable demand is set to W for weight. That is all. So you can modify the code as you like, or you just use the few input variables shown and start the upload. If the D1 mini is still connected, you should select the appropriate COM port under Tools, Port. We also set up the D1 Mini under Tools, Board, ESP8266 Boards, and when this is done, we can click on Upload and Wait. If everything worked correctly, we can open the Serial Monitor under Tools and see if the D1 Mini connects correctly. This looks good so far. Now we can try to establish the connection to our awning. Therefore, we supply the D1 Mini with power. But the microcontroller should be in a place where it can connect to our Wi-Fi and as well within the radio range of the awning. Then we take our original SOMFI remote control and long press the program button, which is accessible on the back via a small screwdriver. We see that it has worked when the awning extends and retracts briefly. After that, we send the payload P for program to the MQTT topic garden awning. I use an Android app called MQTT dashboard for this. When we press send, the awning also confirms this time by briefly extending and retracting. From now on, the D1 mini is paired with the awning. The developer Nictuino has fortunately implemented the code in such a way that the rolling code of the awning is stored in the EEPROM of the ESP8266 and thus continues to work even if the D1 Mini was disconnected from the power supply in the meantime. Time to test it. If we now send a D for down via MQTT, the awning now moves down as hoped. With S, we can stop and U stands for up. Great! Then we can now start to make our circuit ready for continuous use. By the way, if you like my video, click on thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. 
if you implement the project yourself and order the components for it, I would be happy if you also put a penny into the old man's head and click on the donation link in the video description. I have cut a small PCB and now I solder the microcontroller and the RF transmitter on it. For wiring I use enameled copper wire again. On my last video a couple of viewers pointed out that you can also remove the enamel with grinding paper, acetone or a lighter. These are definitely good alternatives as well but I'll stick with the soldering iron for the moment. This is what my little board looks like at the end. I resurrected an old cell phone power supply that I soldered to the 5 volt and crown pins. As a case you could use an old tic tac packing. But you need one of the big packs. Or you can use the big Kinder Surprise X. Since I have a 3D printer I have designed and printed my own housing. Since I also have connected a BME 280 temperature sensor to my circuit, my housing is now a bit larger and has appropriate ventilation slots. The wiring and the code of the BME 280 are not shown here to keep the video simple for you. To get the case screwed together, I like to use M3 embedment nuts, which you can heat up with a soldering iron to melt them into the tightly dimensioned hole. Here I had actually already done that. Now I can close the lid with the screws and hang the device in its final destination, so that from now on the bridge between my smartphone, router and the awning is built. Feel free to write me your questions and comments. And even if I don't answer each message, I read each one and appreciate your feedback. And hey, I know I have a terrible German accent, so slowly I realize why the guy with the Swiss accent has made exactly that to his unique brand. Anyway, you're welcome to continue to make fun of it as well. As long as you understand me, everything is fine. This brings me to the end of my video. Have fun with tinkering and see you next time.